Hi everyone, let's go ahead and see what is residual network or what is ResNet and does it really work in real practice? A residual network is also known as ResNet. This is a deep learning architecture that actually revolutionized the field of computer vision. It improves the accuracy and the performance of artificial neural network. The first residual network was introduced in 2016. This ResNet addressed the challenge of training for a very deep neural network. Generally, in general practice what happened, if your neural network is too deep and you see your accuracy, training and validation accuracy, you will see that your validation accuracy will actually fall behind the training accuracy. As you increase the number of parameters, the complexity as increases, then your network does not perform well. And another problem happens with the deep neural network. Suppose that you have here a neural network which consists here of so many layers. Suppose that it is something like this where, where so many layers are there. All right. So in this case, what happens when it is too deep, then this type of network increases the complexity. All right. And when complexity increases here, you see there, when this complexity increases, then your validation accuracy, initially it starts increasing, but after some time it starts decreasing. This I say as uh, validation accuracy. But at the same time, this training accuracy keep going uh, till the top where it achieve like 100% accuracy. So after some point, your network starts overfitting. So this is the, this, this is the practical problem without the ResNet. But once this ResNet came into the picture, then it actually removes all these, uh, you know, the effects like uh, increasing complexity was not decreasing these validation accuracy. So how this ResNet helped to increase these validation, inc uh, validation accuracy while increasing these complexity. You see what happens here when your network starts as here from the first layer and it goes deeper and deeper, there is the gradient. So this gradient start decreasing at each goes here you know the deeper and deeper as it goes deeper so this is the main problem why this this particular things happens there this happens because of you know this happens because of uh, gradient uh, 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 decreases so this particular problem is known as the vanishing gradient problem. Vanishing gradient problem. So what's this vanishing gradient? Vanishing gradient is like when you have a very deep neural network during the back propagation when the information comes from backside and it changes the weights of these in, in inner layers or the hidden layers. This is the back propagation. So the during the back propagation, these gradients actually vanished. So if there is no gradient, then there is no learning for your network. That is why I said when complexity increases, then the training accuracy increases, but validation accuracy decreases because there is no learning in your system. So it only increases the complexity. So how does this ResNet solve this problem? So what ResNet does here, ResNet create here a skip connection, something like this, something like this. So what you see here, this information, what information you have, let's say X, this X information is passing here. And similarly, let's say this information is X1, then this is coming directly here. And if it is X2, then this is coming directly here. So what happens here, this particular input goes in network and along with that, this input also goes here as well. If you see these here, so 
we have here a two picture let's say the picture a and the picture b so in a picture a if you see here this one is a standard resnet this one is standard resnet and this one is modified resnet so what's the difference here you see the difference is this one cross one convolution so in a standard resnet what happens here generally you have here a 3 by 3 convolution then there is batch normalization then relu is there thereafter you have again a 3 cross 3 convolution a batch normalization thereafter this information goes from here and then it gets added there directly thereafter this relu comes so whatever you are seeing here this information coming from here these two block you can say this one and then this block you can say these two block and here these two block thereafter the last stage relu gets applied after addition you see there this particular relu is getting applied after addition so why does this happen because this relu act, relu introduce here non linearity in your network so this relu introduces their non linearity so when your system is non linear then it is able to learn more complex features there that's how this happens thereafter you see what happens here in second or in modified resnet there is a one cross one convolution and other than that what information you see these connections these connections are also known as skip net all right or skip connection actually it's not skip net or this is known as skip connection so this resnet also introduced here this skip connection so this skip connection is like you are skipping your input which is going to this particular network you are just skipping your input and it is directly going here so what's the purpose of this one cross one convolution the purpose of this is you can match their input and output match you know uh, input shape why does that happens the match input shape suppose that you apply here these 3 by 3 convolution suppose that hypothetically just assume here here you have a 64 channel but the somehow let's say you applied 32 channels here and 32 channels for this convolution then obviously this output will be 32 only so you but but you had here input was 64 so if you bring that directly so there will be 32 and 64 so this will create a problem there but you apply there one cross one convolution a 64 one cross one convolution or a 32 one cross one convolution this produces 32 what you saw there a 32 and this produces also 32 this 32 then these goes together then you can add to here add those together here so one cross one convolution that's there the matching of these shapes together now the question is how the residual network really works in practice see if you just evaluate this network suppose that here i'm just you know going from this slide to another slide or let me uh, bring you here again so whatever the input you have here let's say x1 i think it would be better if i do that here so you have here input which is x and then suppose that you are getting here a uh, output of x1 and then you see what happens here something is going from you know uh, here to there and also something is going with the skip connection so basically uh, i'm sorry well so by mistake i had closed the ppt all right so the basically what happens here what you see there this x1 which you are seeing here what you can write this x1 so the sum information is going through this uh, from this or this whatever you say sum info is going through this particular side all right so if this is your x1 then you can simply say that x1 is x plus something all right it's something like this or you can say that 
there is some info in that. So what happened if this some info you say it as delta x. So you can simply say that x1 is equal to the x plus delta x. So what do you see that? If there are two conditions in the delta x. If this delta x is greater than 0, then you are definitely achieving some output. That's the definite output is there. All right. Definite output. But if this delta x equal to equal to 0, then no loss is happening there. No gain or no loss is happening there. So when this is happening something like that, then in that case, x1 is always greater than, let me uh, do that here. So when this particular things happen, delta x is greater than 0, then in that case, this x1, what you see there, this x1 will be always greater than x. All right, that means whatever the information you are getting here at the output, that will be always more information than this particular x. Otherwise, if it is equal to 0, then x1 is simply equal to x. That means there is no gain and no loss. So what happened here, basically using this skip connection, what you see that using this skip connection is not harming in any way. Even this skip connection is also not, not increasing any number of parameters in your, in your network. So basically, it's, it's like using a ResNet is free of cost to you. There is no parameter increment. There is always some gain. If there is no gain, then no loss. So it's guaranteed that using ResNet, there is no loss. Because if this, if, 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 if this sends almost no information, then even in that case, your X1 will be almost equal information. So, by doing these skip connection, it avoid their, it avoid their vanishing gradient problem. This was a huge problem which gets avoided there, right? So, this vanishing gradient problem gets avoided. And if you use these kind of the connections, then what happens, what you see there, what I explained you earlier that, you know, the accuracy and the complexity matrix there, if you see there, this complexity increases. So your training increases. But earlier we had seen that our uh, validation accuracy was decreasing after some level when complexity was increasing. But if you use this kind of, uh, you know, network there, ResNet, then it just, you know, the increase or just settle there. There are very less chances that after increasing these complexity, your, your, your validation accuracy it, it, it's really less chance that it will decrease there. So that's how this ResNet guarantee that there will be almost always some information gain if you use this residual network. It's not complex. This residual network can be used anywhere in any regular, uh, in any, any regular convolution, uh, uh, the network, this ResNet can be used. This ResNet allows smoother and more uh, efficient uh, uh, gradient flow. This enables the network to learn both shallow and deep representation. So you see, the, the deep representation when your network becomes deeper and deeper, so all these representations are learned very, you know, the convinced, uh, conveniently there. So this ResNet achieved a state of art performance in computer vision task, image classification, object detection, segmentation in all these cases. So you can get started with the ResNet in your network. You can see those accuracy and improvement by yourself. All right. This is all about in this lesson. I'll see you in next one.